The Majority Report did a segment on a Nikki Haley presidential events, uh, campaign event, which she's probably grateful for any coverage she can get at this point, yes. <laughs> uh, in which uh, she raised the issue of trans women competing against cis women in sports. All right. Now, Russell put together a little video montage illustrating his take on this, including Emma Viglin's response to a member chat that came in as they did this segment. So before you play this, Russell, can you just set up what the member was asking and just sort of the context of this bit? Uh, okay, what the member said was interesting. Or the viewer. I don't know if they're a paid subscriber or whatever. Whoever was yeah, watching, they sent whoever, a message into Whoever the show. it was that they were reading from. Um, so they said, y y Emma, you're completely wrong about the science of um, transgender women competing in sports. There are chromosomal and hormonal differences between men and women. This is what's weird. The person said, you're right that they should compete against women, but basically you're making the wrong argument because you're out of your depth and you're wrong about the science. So so this person felt as actually there's really no disagreement here because Emma goes off and I will give her some credit. This is the most honest thing I've seen anyone defending this say. She doesn't give a shit about the science. She actually said, as an institution, women's sports shouldn't exist if uh, fairness is paramount. So I put together a little video dealing with some of the um, some of the interesting cases of what's happened when biological men compete against biological women or female identified biological men compete against women some of the uh some of the outcomes intercut with some of miss viglin's wisdom your argument is really bad on this and you're out of your depth you're correct that trans women should be able to compete in women's sports but your argument for it is just scientifically and factually incorrect i'm actually not bad about this um i'm 100 percent right on this it, i don't give a shit about the scientific explanations people if they identify as a woman get to compete in sports if that's not fair in the short term for a variety of little competitions i don't give a shit i don't give a shit because the societal interest of including trans people in society trumps stupid competition full stop so i'm right about this you're wrong about this Damn. Anyway, um, Dr. Shock, I agree. Let's get rid of weight classes in all combat sports. Perhaps have grown man compete in Little League. Sometimes life's not fair. Whatever. Fox oh, delivered the knees and oh. that's it. Fallen Fox. Game over. I'm not here to talk about my transition. I'm here to kick some fucking ass. I'm feeling excellent. That was sweet, huh? Did you like that? Yeah. And I want to tell everyone else, I'm coming in this in this tournament. Every woman in this tournament better look out. I'm freaking coming. I'm going to roll up the other women here, and I'm going to smoke them. The first race that I competed against a transgender athlete was during my freshman year. And once the gun went off, the two transgender athletes took off flying and left all of us girls in the dust. You're a bad mom if you can't explain that there are people along a gender spectrum and it's not this binary. Like, I mean, I hear this all the time. My daughter plays sports. What am I going to tell to her? You know, it's not fair to her to compete with this kind of person. November 1st, 2022, I was severely injured in a high school volleyball game by a transgender athlete on the opposing team. I suffered from a concussion and neck injury that to this day I'm still recovering from. Other injuries I still suffer from today include impaired vision, partial paralysis on my right side, constant headaches, as well as anxiety and depression. Trans women should be able to compete without question in women's sports because there are a lot of instances where there are athletes who, and, and just, I'm not, there's not even evidence to show that this is the case, but just take their assertion at face value for a second that this is some unfair advantage. I mean, there there's an unfair advantage all the time in sports. That's actually quite... Uh, that's the nature of sports. The statistics do say a male could be 40% stronger than a female on his legs. Biologist Emma Hilton. Things like shoulder width. Those things don't change when transgender women suppress testosterone. They don't get shorter. The performance gap in weightlifting is over 30%. The performance gap when someone is throwing a baseball 
it's over 50%. And the performance gap when a male punches is 160%. From mediocre to champion. You couldn't cut it with the boys, so you pushed women off the podium. Real man steal first place. To watch a transgender female ride away from me like it was nothing, and there's nothing I can do about it, it was torture. I, I really haven't raced since. I know that I'm not the only girl who has missed out on opportunities. There are countless other girls who have lost meets and titles and their drive to compete as hard as they can because they know that they will never be good enough to compete against these athletes. Honestly, like women's sports, it's barely an institution. It's only been around for a few decades. Like if our sources of our outlets for entertainment, for competition, for like, I, I don't know whatever to, however to define them. But if they're not able to accommodate trans people, then they're not worthy of existing. Like, I, I, I'm, it's just like, we're talking about movie theaters. What, what are we talking about here? I mean, I love sports as much as anyone, but if they cannot accommodate, including trans people, I don't give a shit about them being robust. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, be inclusive or don't be. That's it. Or don't exist. All right. I mean, there's a lot there. The last thing about movie theaters is just from outer space. What do you mean? I, are, are I you, know. What, what was that, that even? Are you suggesting that if trans women can't compete against cis women in sports, that it follows from that that they should also be barred from movie theaters? That's... Right, the most ludicrous yeah. comparison I've ever heard. The, the movie theater audiences are not competing in feats of strength against the other members of the audience. Like it's it's not remotely the same thing. And to the point where you know Emma uh, got a lot of negative response from this, and she put out a tweet about this. Turf's triggered by me. LOL. It's simple. Trans girls and women are girls and women. Okay, there's the thing. So 2,024 likes to 4,300 comments. That's a pretty steep ratio there. And, you know, Emma Viglin is not someone who's as on the radar of the right wing. It's not like they're going to go in and all pile on her the way they might like Anna Kasparian or Jen Uger or things like that. So what that signals is that this position on this issue is becoming increasingly unpopular, even amongst left of center people, because it's just so transparently... And so obviously unfair. And to the extent that this is a culture war issue that does not affect majorities of people, well, sure, it doesn't affect majorities of people, but it does affect the people who it affects. And it's not just a matter of losing a competition. Sometimes, as you saw in the video montage that Russell did there, people get hurt, right? This is why Joe Rogan got in trouble. Because Joe Rogan yep. said, no, you shouldn't let a trans woman beat the shit out of a cis woman in a cage. Because if you and pull that, that was the particular case. That was, was the one. Right. About. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, OK, if you look at the two dudes all right, put, put it back up on screen because it's kind of funny. They don't know what the fuck to do. They're like, you know, just when we figured out how to play to Emma's white feminism, now she's kind of anti-woman. What do we say? What do we say? How do we kiss her ass in this situation? I'm supposed to be pro-woman, but she's saying kind of fuck women. So how do I say that in a way that's complimentary to women that's going to satisfy Emma? God, I had this white feminist shit down. I had the poor little rich girl thing down. This is a total curveball. What do I say? So, so what's his name on the left? Uh, Brandon Sutton is on the left. Yeah. Okay, so Brandon comes up with one of the something as fucking stupid, if not stupider than what she's saying through this whole segment. He has a monologue where he says, "Well, actually, this is very condescending to women because you're assuming that they're just out there in their little skirts having fun and they're not ready." to really compete in a serious way or to really be challenged. So congratulations, man. I mean, that is a tough needle to thread. You came up with an argument so <laughs> stupid well, yeah. that it, that it, that it actually fit into the segment. Well, yeah. I mean, look, that is a dumb thing to say in his defense, you know, as a show person, sometimes you have to riff, 
You know, like if it goes there, well, you got to well, come no, up with something. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Look, look at their faces. <laughs> like you gotta come up with something. They're both trying to figure out. They're they're in an impossible box here because they're like, how do I contribute to this conversation without saying something wrong? Because right. what she she's saying right. is so crazy that I can't think of a rational response that might not be taken amiss because we left rationality five exits back on the anti-turf highway here. But that's what he ended up coming up with. He ends up coming up with this fucking moronic, like pro-woman way to frame this. Nobody's buying this. And another section, Matt Leck, who's the producer, you don't see him, he's off screen. He says, well, we were, ha it's interesting because some of them are trying to have some nuance about it. So Lex says, well, we were having a conversation among ourselves about this, which is already conceding there's a conversation to be had, which is more than uh, more than Emma is willing to admit. Um, we're having a conversation, but the right wing with their bigotry forced this onto society. But the rest of us, we were fine. We were having a conversation. All right. So we have the polling on this, on how much society was fine with this until the uh, evil Republicans told them there's something wrong with like dudes entering weightlifting competitions as women. Oh, oh, really? It's only three in 10 Americans that support trans athletes participation in female sports. Well, I, I, I don't think seven out of 10 people in America are far right wing bigots. Do you? I, I mean, they probably do. But you're you're presenting this as if it's some kind of a default, rational, reasonable position, which it very well may be among the people you hang with and around people who are terrified to say that they don't agree with this, which honestly, looking at the expression on their faces as she's going on this rant, I suspect they're closet turfs. I suspect these guys are in the closet. They're just like, I ain't saying shit about this until this blows over. It's going to blow over, right? Right? It's going to blow over. Well, I think I think this whole issue is going to blow over soon, so I wanted to put this message on the screen here. It's a distraction while they prepare to enslave the population. You all yes. can see that? No, I can't yes. see that. Yes. And and I yes. think, I, I honestly believe we're almost through it, at least this part of it the sports thing because i believe and i'm not certain of this but i believe it's fewer than three in ten believe in you know the sports issue as i, I, heard, I heard it, it was 90 and so i think i, was yeah, I think it's 85 to 90 now well this was that was taken in 2022 it, so yeah. you know this has gotten a lot of uh, this issue's been hashed out a lot since then so um yeah no look i think i think this is almost through but i think it is it is important to sort of settle this um so that you know you you can move past it like like here on the show we try to as a rule we russ and i actually talked about this week maximum one culture war segment per week because we do want to talk about ukraine and the debt ceiling and you know protests and israel and foreign policy like all that, that other that's stuff a, that's why we didn't do anna's karen segment right we didn't do anna's karen thing because we didn't want two culture war things uh, because all of that is much more important than this but this is holding a real left movement back in a lot yes. of ways yes. and and yes. i think i think that this particular battle um is almost over um i actually do think that because the the polling is it started out three and ten now it's fewer than that you know because and, that, and that's what makes this so bizarre and that's that's why emma got ratioed so hard she's getting ratioed not by right wingers right wingers don't follow her in great enough numbers to be you know triggered enough to troll her on that she's getting pushed back because this is now not a popular position on the left even well especially and again god bless her she made the underlying position plain in a way that you have to be a rich girl with no sense of self-preservation to make it plain. She doesn't feel like she has to protect herself no matter what she does. She's got a nice big fat trust fund to fall back on so she can say what she actually thinks. Fuck women's sports. She literally is making the argument that if women's sports 
are going to be destroyed by the inclusion of trans people, then women's sports should not exist. And goes on to say, well, it's only been around for a few decades. I mean, what if, what, I mean, that's a, 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 hey, the Supreme Court, when they struck down provisions in the Civil Rights Act, I mean, that's only been around a few decades. But, you know, right. what's the big I mean, why what, shouldn't what, a trans what's the big person deal? take her place on the show? She should give her her role up. Yeah, why right? don't you why give not? up let, your let place on the show? somebody co-host the show. And why, not only why, does she I don't, I don't see, I don't, you know, in this triumvirate talking about trans issues, I don't see a single trans person. Why get rid of Bender? Right. Why isn't there a trans person on the panel? This is what we talked to Buck Angel about. A lot of trans people themselves are not represented in these conversations because a lot of these opinions, these are the white savior issues, right? These are the issues for non-trans people, the virtue signal, their quote unquote allyship. And, uh, you know, th there's not actually, a, you know, a trans person represented in that conversation. And that that is the norm. Uh, that is the rule in these conversations, not the exception. The other thing that's remarkable about this is that she is, as she said, a huge sports fan herself. She actually has a sports podcast, the Emma Sports Viglin Network. So if you if you have a sports show, which she does, and she's done a lot of episodes, she's had it for a long time, how could the issue of uh, fairness in sports not matter to you? Like, how? Like, that it, would be it, like if you work for ESPN... And you don't think that, like, the steroid scandal of the late 90s was a big deal. Oh, who cares, right? Sports. Whatever, whatever, right? Not a big deal. Yeah, they should be able to juice up. Yeah, so they hit the ball farther once they get the steroids. Why not? Yeah, it's, it's, well, yeah, it's unfair, but sports is unfair, right? Well, yes, you're a sports fan, and you're arguing that the societal good of trans people being able to play sports outweighs sports being valid in terms of them being competitive. And if that destroys female sports, so be it. Okay, so let's unpack that. Why, why are, do you feel it's self-evident that the societal good of allowing trans people to compete against women, biological men who identify as women to compete against women. Why do you feel that that is a greater societal good than women who fought for, as I showed in my montage, not decades, centuries to actually be in the position they are now where they have their own leagues, where they have their own competitions. Why do you feel that it is a greater societal good than them being able to have their own sports and to have a lot of the awards and prizes that come with that that had exclusively before belonged to men. The scholarships, the cash prizes, the awards, the endorsements, everything that comes with that that is taken away from them if you destroy their sport by allowing it to be overrun by biological men. Why are you arguing that doing that to potentially half the population is a great societal good when you're talking about doing something that's not even going to benefit 0.06% of the population because most trans people are not actually going to sign up and play in these sports teams. So who are, you, who are you talking about? How many people are you benefiting that's worth destroying women's sports as an institution? Because that's exactly what will happen because who wants to watch a sport where the winner is meaningless? where it's not competitive. Nobody wants to watch that. If you keep doing this, yes, it's going to be the end of women's sports. You know what it won't be the end of? Men's sports. What kind of a fucking feminism is that? What kind of a feminism is that? Yeah, well, fuck it. Women's sports are relatively new. Men's sports have been around longer. Just leave it to the men. Just let the men have it. You call that feminism? That's feminism? I believe there's a strong element of misogyny in this movement. Uh, well, that's what Buck Angel said. And yeah, I mean, that that makes sense to me. I thought of this like, OK, once you, you know, you get to a point where you may look more like a woman than a man, but you still have the muscle mass and the bone density of a man and you might be better to compete in the men's category. What would be the problem with having them compete with biological Men, like when I was in Little League, there were some girls, a couple of girls who were good enough players where they didn't play softball. They played with the boys 
and mm-hmm. we all dealt with it. We had to mm-hmm. deal with it because that's called being tolerant. That's called being mm-hmm. accepting, right? So mm-hmm. why can't the men be to- be asked to afford that tolerance to a trans woman? In other words, if a trans woman still plays at the level of a biological male, why couldn't that trans woman play on the male team and have the men say, yeah, this this person may look like a, a woman to you. They identify as a woman, but they belong in your class of athlete because they can compete on your level. Men aren't being asked to tolerate that level of discomfort that some of them might feel because there are a lot of men who might feel uncomfortable about sharing a locker room with someone who identifies as a woman. They're not asked to make that sacrifice. The women are make, are asked to make the sacrifice of losing to biological well, men who well, identify as women. I wasn't sure I was going to pull this up. Okay, so let's take a look at the cyclist in Toronto because this is what a lot of people are saying. Hey, straight up, a lot of these motherfuckers literally want to win. They want to win. It's It's actually, for a lot of them, it's not about expressing themselves as a woman. Because the solution is to have an open category, right? But here we had a cyclist up in Canada where there was an open category and the cyclist decided instead to compete against the women. This was a case where the person could have competed in an open category. And finally, he actually had a little rebellion. Scroll down. All right, so the women refused to pose on the podium. Um, Riley Gaines, who we did, we featured, uh, we did a feature on when she got attacked after giving a speech. She's been arguing that women need to have these kinds of protests now to shut this down. They need to start, and it's hard for these women. A lot of them, they've trained their whole lives. And even getting a second or a third place can give them an opportunity for a scholarship or a prize. Riley Gaines is arguing they need to start to mount this kind of an opposition. And even they need to start to to refuse to compete against men. Now, I'm sorry. This person, you can't even say, well, there was no way for them to compete otherwise. Yes, there was. Yes, there was. There was an open category, and they chose to compete against the women. And then had right, the there was ball. a non-binary category. Yep, there was a non-binary category. That's brave. That's brave and inspired. No, that's a fucking asshole. I am sorry. That is a fucking asshole. You knew, you knew that you had an advantage over those women, and you have the fucking balls when nobody should. Maybe not literally. We don't know. But you you stand up on that podium and you say, I know there were other. This is what this is what they said there. I know there were other women in my category. I don't know why there's nobody here. Well, there's nobody here because you fucking cheated. You cheated them. You know, you know what they won by 17 minutes against the women in that category. 17 fucking minutes. So what Anna was saying there, Riley Gaines actually talked about that in the segment we did on her, uh, talking about, well, there's always inequality in sports and they'll bring up Michael Phelps. And Riley Gaines was pointing out, okay, so between the top man and the top woman in a sport, usually you'll have about a 12% difference. It's not close to that between the first and second ranked woman in a, in a competition or the first and second ranked man in a competition. You don't have a 12 point spread like that. You don't get blown out by 17 minutes like that with the next best woman. Um, so I'm sorry, man, Th- this wasn't even a case where there wasn't another category to race in. You're supposed to go, oh, that's stunning and brave. No, that's a fucking cheat. That's a fucking asshole. And people recognize that. And that's why this is not sustainable. And I and I actually I think that's part of why these two guys didn't say anything. I mean, I mean, the one on the left, he spoke up a little bit after much effort to figure out what he could say that would be in the lane. You know, that that this is going on for like a half an hour (laughs) before he comes up with something. (laughs) Yeah, but um, in the end, I think, uh, as you say, this is on, this is on the way out. Please clap. <laughs>